William Shakespeare was born on the 26th of April, 1564, in Stratford-upon-Avon, and he was brought up there until his marriage with Han Hathaway in 1582, with whom he had three children. Some documents reveal Shakespeare's presence in London and his success in the theatres. Due to the plug, in the years 1593 and 1594, theatres were closed. Shakespeare's theatre production continued until 1613, when he definitely gave up writing. He died in 1616 and he was buried in the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford. Of his dramaturgy production, his masterpiece is the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Written in the first years of the 17th century, it is set in the castle of Elsinore. The play begins some months after the king's death. Hamlet's mother, the queen, has married Claudius, brother of the dead king. The appearance of a ghost on the bastions will break the fragile peace of the castle. Horatius, Hamlet's dearest friend, tells the prince about the extraordinary resemblance of the ghost with his father and Hamlet decides to meet the spirit. The latter will reveal an horrible truth to his son. His wife and his brother loved each other long before his death. One day, Claudius, who yearned for the throne, finding the king asleep in the garden, poisoned him. Then, the ghost asks Hamlet to avenge him, and the prince will accept. From this moment on, Hamlet will start acting as if he's mad, and he will play his role so well that both Claudius and Gertrude will invite two friends of Hamlet in Elsinore. Even a theatre company will arrive at the castle along with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. The company will perform in Elsinore some days later. In the meantime, Polonius, the king's advisor, will claim that Hamlet has been driven mad by his love for his daughter Ophelia. Hamlet will ask the theatre company to perform a play which he himself has written, in which takes place on stage the representation of the fratricide committed by Claudius. Having now the proof of his uncle's crime, Hamlet decides to speak with his mother, but in a moment of anger, he will kill Polonius, thinking that it's Claudius hiding behind the curtains. The king decides to send Hamlet to England, so that he will be killed by the England's king. Going on, the story becomes more and more a twine of tricks and violence, until the tragic epilogue, which will see the death of Hamlet and of all the characters on stage. Probably, one of the reasons for which the Hamlet has become one of the greatest theatre works of all time is that it stages mankind in its purest form. Hamlet is not just the Prince of Denmark, he represents the average man facing loss, pain, betrayal, love, power and doubt. The most important themes of the play are love and death, revenge and madness. But there are other sub-themes which permeate the whole work. Incest, thirst for power, carnality, action and passivity, the existence of God and the theatre imitating reality. These themes characterize in particular two characters, Hamlet and Ophelia. The latter is a key figure in the whole play. We meet her for the first time in the scene third of Act I, in which we see her with her brother Laertes, who is living for France. He tells her sister not to give in to Hamlet's love's promises, since he is a prince, and one day he would have to choose another woman to rule over his kingdom. Laertes is the first strong figure which surrounds Ophelia, and we meet just after him, the second one, her father Polonius. The young girl will be victim of his brother's advice, his father's orders, and, in the end, of Hamlet's disavow and the refusal. Ophelia incarnates the figure of the innocent woman that with her eyes can see much more than what it seems. It is not a case that is there to pronounce the famous sentence, the king rises, 
during the representation on stage of the king's murder. Thematically speaking, she represents innocence and masking sin. Nevertheless, after his father's death, Ophelia will go insane. It is the luck of the three figures that they have always directed their life to create her madness. Ophelia's death is a turning point for Hamlet. Analyzed even by Sigmund Freud, Hamlet is characterized by an Oedipus complex towards his mother, which emerges especially during the scene in the Queen's chamber. Hamlet is even the character representing the theme of the double, to be or not to be, that is the question. Which is expressed in his famous monologue, To be or not to be. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. With this question, the prince wonders about the existence and death, but even on the fear of the latter and of what waits the soul in the afterlife. On one end, the young prince is divided between his duty as son and the rationality of an educated man who knows that cannot act without proofs. On the other hand, Hamlet plays for time, faking his madness, but when it comes to being company of people he trusts, he is able to make lucid and deep reflections. Hamlet is an anguished character, who torments himself on justice and honor, and he is able to go from one extreme to another, for example, from love to misogyny. It is important to highlight this irony, which permeates the whole play, and of which the most important example is his line, Long Life to the King. The Fiorelli's film adaptation of the play, which came out in 1990, it is one of the most famous and appreciated of all times. Obviously, an entire representation of the theater work is impossible, since it will last six hours. Zaffirelli, choosing to give Hamlet's role to Mel Gibson, gives the first input of his different interpretation of the play. Hamlet is freed from his pallor and gives way to an athletic character which bases everything on his drama skills. For what concerns the dialogues, Zeffirelli operates many cuts on the text, and he changes the position of many scenes, some of which will affect the whole narrative structure. <laughs> Striking example is Hamlet's monologue, which is postponed and for which Hamlet comes back to his father's script. The shooting of meaningful glances through close-up give the idea to the spectator of the relationship existing among the characters on the scene. Zeffirelli since the very first framing, works incessantly on the relationship high and low, whole and exterior spaces, playing with the dynamic of appearing and hiding. Hamlet's Oedipus complex is unchanged, and it is highlighted by the kiss on the mouth that Gertrude gives to his son before running away. To his relationship with the Queen, it is counterposed the one with Ophelia played by a young Elena Bonham Carter, who is presented to a scene in which Hamlet is chasing the young lady. After Ophelia's death, the narration changes, with many more violent scenes, as the beheading of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Laertes' arrival with a sword in his hand, and Hamlet's dialogue with Yorick's school. These scenes lead the spectator to the forthcoming tragic end of the story, but, as always, with an incredible internal dynamism of the shooting. Horatio, I am dead. 